filming yourself by yourself can be pretty difficult. You end up wearing a lot of hats all at once. Not only do you need to be the subject of the video, but you also need to make sure that your shots are in focus, the exposure is right, the composition looks good, all while hoping the shots you get will cut together into an interesting sequence. So today, we're gonna go through six tips on how to cinematically film yourself. Tip number one, before you hit that record button or even head out to shoot, you need to plan what you're going to shoot. What's the end sequence gonna look like? Do you need a wide establishing shot? How many medium and close-up shots will you get? Do you need some cutaway shots as well to highlight the environment or to help tell the story? Planning might feel like it takes ages, but you're gonna thank yourself when you finally get to shooting and editing, because if you've planned well, then getting the shots will be fast and efficient, and when you start editing, you already know how the shots will likely cut together, and it just becomes a matter of finishing touches like your color grading or the sound design. On the flip side, if you're just out getting whatever footage, you'll probably end up overshooting a bunch of clips you don't need, and then spend double, triple, or quadruple quadruple the amount of time on the cutting floor trying to piece together your story. When it comes to solo shooting, the age-old measure twice, cut once saying really applies. Tip number two, get yourself a tripod. This might sound like such obvious advice, but I can't tell you the number of times where I bring my camera with me, but not my tripod, and I just end up setting my camera wherever I can and then use my backpack or other objects to help prop it up to get it into the right position. When you're filming by yourself, your tripod is basically your cameraman. Lately, I've been using the Peak Design tripod for your standard tripod shots and the Sony wireless Bluetooth shooting grip for tabletop tripod shots. If you want a flexible tabletop tripod, then you can always grab the classic Joby Gorillapod as well. And you know how you always see YouTubers shoot these great videos of themselves walking past the camera or driving away from the camera and all that? Yep, be ready to walk triple the steps so you can get those sweet self-film shots. Tip number three, use an app or a dedicated external monitor. If you're lucky, you might have a little flip out screen on your camera and this might be good enough if you're just shooting vlog style content. But if you're planning on plopping down a tripod, being several feet away from the camera and out in the bright sunlight, you're gonna have a pretty hard time checking your shot. Now, if you're using a Sony camera, I have recommended the Monitor Plus app in the past, and it works great on both your phone and your tablet, but nothing beats having a dedicated tool for the job. That's where the product of the day comes in. This is the Godox GM6S, their latest five and a half inch 4K ultra bright camera monitor. As with any camera monitor, the first benefit is getting to review your composition, exposure, and focus on a much larger screen than the one that's on the back of your camera. Like many other competitive camera monitors, it offers offers a suite of tools that will help make sure the shot you're trying to get ends up being in focus, properly exposed, and framed correctly. The features I use the most are LUT preview, so I can see what my S-Log3 footage will look like once I color correct it, false color, so I can see if my subject is properly exposed and nothing important is getting clipped, focus assist to make sure my subject is tack sharp, grid lines to help with composition and centering subjects, and audio monitoring to make sure the audio is indeed recording and it's not peaking. What makes this monitor a bit unique is that it's built very nicely. I mean, the whole thing is made of metal, which does add some weight, but definitely adds durability and a sense of quality. It also has a fanless design, which is really nice since it won't introduce any fan noise to your shots. And most notably, this camera monitor is bright. I mean, 1200 nits bright. This feature here is what actually made me interested in checking out this monitor, since if you're filming yourself outdoors, if you can't see the monitor screen, then it's really useless, isn't it? The only concern that crossed my mind was potential overheating considering the brightness and fanless design. However, I haven't run into that issue myself and I haven't seen any other users complain about it. Though, if you took this out to the desert, I'm not sure what would happen. Maybe I need to pull a potato jet and stick this in the oven just to see how it holds up. Otherwise though, the monitor utilizes Sony MPF batteries, can be powered via USB-C or an AC in power adapter, can daisy chain HDMI signals, can be used for audio monitoring, controlled through touchscreen or physical button inputs, and can even control your camera settings and shutter button with a camera control cable. As an added bonus, Godox even provides a mini HDMI to HDMI, micro HDMI to HDMI, and a full-size HDMI to HDMI cable in the box, along with a hot shoe mount. And if you feel like the screen brightness still isn't enough, there's also a Velcro attachable sun hood as well. 
As a disclaimer and reminder, the product of the day is usually products I've either purchased on my own with my own money or was sent to me for free with no financial compensation from the manufacturer. In this case, Godox did send me this monitor for me to review and provide my honest opinions. Now, moving on to tip number four, use a slider to add movement to your solo shots. This one would require a bit more of investment if you don't already own a slider or pan tilt head, but it's a tip that I think makes a huge difference. When you're in front of the camera, obviously the expectation is either you're holding the camera and that's why it's moving or the camera's locked down either on a tripod or just resting on like a random surface. But when you add in a sweet orbiting shot into your sequence, it elevates the level of production quality and when properly used can add dynamic movement to your shot. And it doesn't even need to be a big movement. Even just a subtle, small sliding movement can create parallax by utilizing an object in the foreground. Next is tip number five, be intentional with lighting. Don't forget the step. Like I said, when you shoot solo, you have to wear so many hats. You have to make sure your camera settings are correct, uh, your exposure of the shot overall looks good, make sure that the focus is set correctly and that I mean, you're basically the actor, so you gotta hit your marks correctly, right? You gotta make sure you're in frame. And when you're thinking about all of those things, it's hard to remember that you are probably the subject of the shot. And when you're behind the camera setting up your shot, what you don't have is a stand-in to see how the light is hitting you. With a lot of practice, you'll probably be able to nail this on your first try, but more often than not, be ready to shoot the shot a second or third time. When you're done with your shot, review it and think about if you actually like how the lighting looks, especially how it looks on you. I've done this way too many times where I get the shot and very quickly look at the clip and go, yeah, that looks good enough and move on just to be on the computer editing later and go, man, I really wish I had angled myself a little differently and did a second take. Finally, as a little bonus for tip number six, add subtle camera movements in post-production to avoid too many static shots. If you're not gonna be using a slider, then adding a subtle, and I mean subtle, push in or pull out or pan left or right to your shot will give it so much more life. And when I say subtle, I mean like going from scale 100 to scale 102 kind of subtle. Just enough to give the feeling of showing more of the shot if you're doing a pull out or a slight focus on the subject by adding a push in. Strategically and intentionally using this tip can bring your sequence to life when compared to an edit without these subtle movements. All right, those are my tips on how to cinematically film yourself. Let me know in the comment section down below if these tips were helpful or if you have any tips to share with the community. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Peace.